Right, so good day class. So today we're going to discuss about pre-designed uh, services. I think this is UAP uh, SPP document 201. So introduction to pre-designed services. So let's look at first the importance of architectural services. So the role of the architect has evolved over time to meet the changing needs of clients advancements in technology and new legal requirements then architects must continuously expand their services to address these changes while maintaining the core aspects of their professional practice so what's uh, written here in the statement is true class uh, because over time you could see a lot of advancements in uh, technology right? for instance now we're entering to the new ai age and then there are also new legal requirements, um, new laws that are passed. In the most recent one, we have Republic Act 9266 or the Architecture Act of 2004. And I think there are some others related to building construction uh, which are in the pipeline already. So with these advancements, it is important that the architect must expand their services course while maintaining uh, our professionalism or the core aspects of our professional practice so second uh, aspect is the early involvement of the architect so engaging an architect from the outset of a project is highly beneficial for the client so uh, this means that we it's highly it's good for the client to hire an architect at, at the beginning or even at the conception of a project because the architect can guide the client on a lot of things because of our uh, because of our training uh, because of our academic training then a seasoned architect can provide an unbiased analysis of the architect of the project setting parameters to balance the client's needs with available resources and constraints if you're already a seasoned architect of course you could already have an unbiased analysis of the project and then you balance the needs of the client with the limitations as well as the budget for the project so that's i think that's the main purpose of us architects uh, in in projects because uh, we are trained to look into um, not only the the needs of the client but the limitations as well so there, for example there are physical limitations on the site because of its shape the rain etc then the resources or the fundings and other constraints such as the availability of materials in a certain area so what are the key points here the architect services are not static they adapt to the evolving landscape of demands standards technology and legislation i think this is self-explanatory it may it really means that our services they are dynamic in nature because we evolve over time um look at your uh, architectural history you re if you read, read about Imhotep he was the first architect during the pyramids of Egypt so the landscape uh, of construction has changed since the inception of the pyramids to the modern times already so we have different technologies already and of course in the modern times we have legislations which protect the practice of the profession as well as the interest of the public then involving an architect early in the project planning process ensures that the project is analyzed objectively optimizing the use of resources and addressing any limitations so this is true because uh, as we architects are involved in what we call creative engineering so we, we, which means that our training is not rigid and limited to a certain extent okay so we could devise creative solutions to problems next slide so an overview of the scope of pre-designed services so pre-designed services encompasses a wide range of architectural services so it has a lot it is composed of a lot of architectural services so they extend from the initial identification of problems to activities 
that enable the architect to conceptualize various architectural and related solutions. So these are the key components of uh, pre-design services. So we have here consultation, which is, I think this is the first things, one of the first uh, things that happen in the pre-design. So the, you provide, it's providing advice, attending meetings, and evaluating project-related issues. So I think this is the initial uh, phase when the client approaches you and, uh, and asks for your technical expertise on a certain project that he or she has in mind. Then you have the pre-visibility studies, preliminary analysis to assist in early decision making. After that, we have the feasibility studies, which is a detailed analysis to assess the viability of a proposed development. So, I think uh, in your in your high school, when you're in high school, you already performed some basic feasibility studies. And when you reach design nine and ten, you're going to conduct feasibility studies on how the pro your the project that you're that that you are proposing for your thesis is uh, um, realistic. Okay, in terms of return of investment and other factors. And we have site selection analysis. So evaluating potential sites based on a specific criteria. So the client could hire you also for this one. For example, the client will hire you to select the best location for his hotel. So we're going to help the client on looking at several sites, and then looking into uh, the various factors that make a site um, uh, great for that particular uh, project. And we have site utilization and land use studies, uh, analyzing the site development potential and land use, then architectural programming, defining requirements and identifying solutions. So this is these are the part. I think um, when you were in your first year or second year, you were told to do the architectural programming of a residential building. So those are the basic things that you're going to do. But when you already do bigger projects, uh, for example, the client will ask you to, uh, to design the architectural programming of a proposed hospital or, or a, an airport. So it, it's, it is quite uh, complex compared to simple buildings. And you have your space planning, determining the size, configuration and arrangement of spaces. I think this is one of the primary functions of the architect. So we look into the configurations and arrangement of spaces. So as you go further in design, we're going to do more complex space planning. So architecture is not limited only to residential buildings or small commercial buildings. Then we have space management studies analyzing space requirements based on organizational structure then we have here value management minimizing cost while maintaining program integrity so this only means that you could help the client find the best value for his or her investment for example if he has a, he has a, 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 a project and then he has a limited funds or project uh, or limited funds or resources you could advise the client to look into different finishes so that the project could still be finished uh, within the uh, with the original design concept at mind but at a lower cost based on his budget then we have design brief preparation it's outlining project terms objectives and requirements so you're already trained to do this guys since since you, since when you entered your first year of study in architecture school we're already Identifying the objectives and requirements of the projects that you are doing. And of course, you have here promotional services, which is generating financial support and public acceptance for the project. So mostly in promotional services, I think these are things the client hires you to do um, the scale model of a project or the 3D model or the animations so that the the pro, the public could be aware of the existence of his or her project especially through where um for condominiums wherein the client sells out units then the, the, the client will ask the architect to make 
renders of the different um, different bedroom types that are available for the project or different um, apartment units okay. then the importance of pre-design so these services lay the foundation for a successful architectural project so when you say pre-design guys so this happens before the design implementation happens so these are the foundations so without these services you cannot say uh, that the project will be successful but if you have a good foundation if you have good pre-designed services a well-established foundation for the project then it goes to say and it will follow that the project will be successful so they help in making informed decisions optimizing resources and addressing constraints early in the project so with this guys pre-designed services is quite important okay because like what it's what, what stated there they help in they help the client make informed decisions and they could also optimize the resources that's needed for the project before we start with a design phase so that's early in the project so pre-design is also quite an important service that we offer to our clients and we have here the consultation services so by definition consultation service involves the architect providing oral or written advice attending conferences and making evaluations and appraisals regarding a contemplated uh, project so it just means that consultation could either be oral where when you talk to the client or written advice when you for example when you respond to the client via email or um, via letter then attending conferences and making evaluations and appraisals regarding a contemplated project for example you evaluate the feasibility of a project or look into um, it's probable benefit that the client that the project will provide to a client then let's look into the purpose of consultation so the architect offers valuable inputs that can guide the client in making informed decisions even if the project is not eventually pursued so the yeah there are times when the project will not be pursued guys especially if the data suggest not to pursue the project so it's important that uh, during consultation uh, during your consultation phase with the client that you be uh, honest as much as possible for example if the property of the client is in a flood prone area or in an earthquake zone or tsunami zone and the client wants to build a house there you should be open to your client okay even if the project will not push through in the end the client will appreciate your advice to them so um, these services are crucial in the early stages of a project to ensure that the client has a clear understanding of the potential challenges and opportunities of course opportunities and challenges they are part of the same point so if you could identify challenges within those challenges there are also opportunities that could be found so you just have to be creative then the scope of consultation services so these are the scope yeah you have three scopes here so you have advice and direction so the architect provides advice on various aspects of the project including the design feasibility and regulatory compliance so why design you could just advise the client what's the best design that could best suit a particular project without going into the details because it's already in the design services already. and regulatory compliance of course it's quite important that what you do complies with the building code and republic act 9266 then you have conference participation so the architect participates in meetings and discussions to contribute insights and clarify project details then evaluations and appraisals the architect assesses the project's viability potential risks 
and possible outcomes. So, I just make this bigger so that we could see. Okay. So, we have here the benefits of consultation services. The force you have informed decision making. So the client gains a deeper understanding of the project, enabling better decision making. Since with pre-designed services, guys, the client could already advise the client already on the various aspects. So the decisions that he is going to make would be uh, better compared that if you jump into the design service uh, already without looking at the background then you have risk mitigation early evaluations help identify and address potential risk reducing the likelihood of costly mistakes so it's important guys in pre-designed services pre-designed service a uh, consultation services is important because you could already identify potential risk already at this stage i mean the client could already identify by consulting you we have here strategic planning. The architect's input can help shape the project's direction, ensuring alignment with the client's goals and resources. So, your, import, your input, guys, is really important because it will guide the direction of the project. Because after pre-design, you already go to the design service already. So, you have here the next slide. You have here the pre-feasibility and feasibility studies. So what are pre-feasibility studies? So the purpose of pre-feasibility pre -feasibility studies is to assist the client in early decision making by providing an initial assessment of the project soundness. Then the process, it involves the procurement, analysis, and the use of secondary information related to project. And the outcome is it allows the client to promptly explore available or readily identifiable directions and options for the project. And the data used generally include research, process, and validated secondary data such as electronic and print sources. So these are already available in the internet. So for example, you could, you could search if a certain uh, location is prone to flooding or prone to certain, certain hazards such as earthquakes and soil li liquefaction, among, other, among others. You have your feasibility studies. So the purpose of feasibility studies is to determine the viability of a proposed development based on the findings of the pre-feasibility studies. So it involves a detailed analysis of the project considering present and future trends. So in my experience, guys, when uh, back, I think around 14 years ago, when we conducted feasibility studies, I was a, a neophyte architect back then. So it's not only the architect that's involved. So it involves a lot of professionals. So there was me, the architect. You also have a structural engineer, um, some guys in marketing, finance, and uh, real estate brokers so what we did was uh, brainstorm and look into the the feasibility of a project if it if that's if a certain commercial project fits a certain area so we look into the current uh, market we look into the the presence of similar uh, projects within the vicinity and how successful they are okay and you have here the outcome provides a forecast of how the project will perform over time, helping in making informed decisions about proceeding with the development. And the data required, it requires primary data gathering analysis to ensure a comprehensive understanding of the project's potential. So in the pre-feasibility study, guys, you just rely on what's on the electronic and print data that are available. But in the feasibility studies, you're already going to have uh, some people do the leg legwork in doing data analysis 
on some of the data that well, that's going to be needed for the feasibility studies might not be available online. Okay, so you really have to, to gather the data yourselves. So what are the importance of these studies? So first importance is risk management. So it helps in identifying and mitigating potential risk in the project life cycle. Resource optimization. So it aids in the efficient allocation of resources by assessing the feasibility of the project. Then strategic planning. It provides a solid foundation for strategic planning and decision making by evaluating the project's prospects. Okay. Next slide. We have your site selection analysis. So, what's the purpose of site selection and analysis? So, it, it's to identify the most suitable location for a proposed project or building program. So, when you reach design 9 and, or, and design 10, you're going to make a site selection and analysis of different sites and choose the best site for your thesis. Then it involves evaluating various sites based on a specific criteria to determine their appropriateness for the project. So the key term here is appropriateness for the project. So you should look if the site is appropriate for a project because there are certain sites that might not be good for a commercial project or certain sites that might be not good for a residential development. So you should do your fair share of research in the site selection and analysis. Then the process of site selection and analysis. We have here the formulation of the site criteria. So it's establishing a set of parameters to evaluate potential sites. This criteria may include factors such as location, accessibility. Um, accessibility means are there roads available to access the project? environmental conditions of course you have to look if the, the area is uh, the environmental conditions of the area is suited for the development zoning regulations and of course cost <coughs> excuse me guys assistance to the client so the architect provides guidance to the client in assessing various sites Considering both the project requirements and the long term implications, long term implications of the site selection. So the key word here is guidance. So we're just there to guide the client. Then site evaluation. Conducting a thorough analysis of each potential site, including site visits, surveys, and consultations with relevant authorities. Then decision making. So based on the analysis, the architect and client collaboratively determine the most appropriate site for the project. So this is something that that's um, I mean this is a democratic process. You have to allow the client to choose. But you have also to advise the client on what's the best choice that he or she could make. But the final choice would still be with the client. So make sure that everything is documented, that this was the advice that you gave, but the client's decision was this. Okay. So what's really important in, in this, guys, uh, in the site selection analysis is that everything should be well documented. Then the importance of site selection and analysis. First is that it's a foundation for project success. The chosen site significantly impacts the design, construction, and overall success of the project. Then, risk mitigation. Identifying potential challenges and constraints early in the process helps avoid costly issues later on. Then, strategic planning. A well-chosen site aligns with the project's goals and objectives Enhancing its viability and sustainability. And for the last slide, last slide, we have here site utilization and land use studies. For the purpose of site utilization and land use studies, 
is to identify the development potentials of a site through proper land utilization. Then these studies help in understanding how best to use the land in accordance with its characteristics and constraints. Because land guys have different characteristics. A particular site could be flat, a particular site could have uh, steep slopes, etc. Then it could also have constraints such as access to road, to a road network, access to utilities, etc. Then what's the process of site utilization in land use studies? So first is the identification of development potential. So it's assessing the site's capacity for development, considering factors such as topography, soil quality, and existing infrastructure. Then analysis of the site context. It's examining the surrounding environment, including neighboring properties, natural features, and community amenities. So you should also look at the neighboring properties as well because you cannot build a residential site near factories or near an industrial zone because it would really affect the quality of life of the residents there. Then you should look also in the natural features. Uh, that particular site would have a nice view of the ocean, a nice view of the mountains. So as the architect, you should advise the client on how to take advantage of the natural features of the site. Okay. The site could have um, a natural water features also that could, you could use as an advantage for the project. Then, evaluation of development controls. So, it's understanding the regulatory framework that applies to the site, including zoning laws, building laws, and environmental regulations. So, in building laws, I think you're already aware with the National Building Code, Fire Code, DP344, and the pertinent codes which relate to the construction of infrastructure in the Philippines. Then you also have different environmental regulations also in this country that we must consider, especially if the development that you're going to do would be near the ocean or near the river. So you should have the technical expertise to advise the client on those things. So what are the importance of these studies? So, uh, just the same at the earlier uh, slides, of course, it's to allow the client to make informed decisions. So, it provides a basis for making informed decisions about the type and scale of development that is feasible on the site. The type meaning, um, what's the best, uh, for example, should the should uh, best project there be institutional, commercial, residential or other types and the scale of the development is how large should the development be that is feasible on the site for example the client has a as a corner lot and then he wants to build a hotel and the client hires you for the feasibility studies of the project i'll just connect uh guys uh, because the pc uh, sorry for that guys i think uh, my pc just shut down it's slow but so, like what I've said, the importance of site utilization, uh, just like in the previous slide, it's in informed decision making. The next would be risk mitigation. So, it identifies potential challenges and constraints in the planning process, reducing the, risk, reducing the risk of costly surprises later on. So, while we could still identify the risk on paper, it's much better than when you're already doing the construction and then the risk appear. It's going to be quite costly for the project. Then another is for the sustainable development. So it ensures that the use of the land is in harmony with its natural and social environment, thus promoting sustainability. So sustainability, guys, is quite important uh, right now, especially because... We are living on an earth which has limited resources. So as architects, we must make sure that whatever resource that we're going to use, that is going to be optimized. If you're going to design a project, it should be as much as possible a sustainable one. Okay. So that future generations could benefit as well. So you could all integrate that in the site utilization and land use studies as part of 
your service in the pre-feasibility phase. Uh, pretty, no, uh, pre-design phase of the project. So, guys, this would be our lecture. So, we would, our lectures is part 1 and part 2 for UAP document 201. Next week, we will discuss about part 2 of uh, the SPP. So, I'll be posting our activities in our Padlet link. If you have further questions or clarifications on the matter, you could approach me anytime and I'll always respond to your queries. Okay, so take care guys and see you next meeting.